Hello again. What I'm going to do now is add color and shading to this plan of mine, my G for my Halloween ABCs assignment. Remember this is worth 50 points, this one drawing. It isn't that you always have to outline, but I will outline these only because I like outlining so much. I like the way the marker moves across the surface. I like the way that I can vary the line. See how I emphasize that curve right there? And how I'm going to go in here and once again adjust the size of that ghost arm right there. Notice how I turn the paper in ways I'm going to change this in ways that allow me more easily to draw each and every part. Now that's a very bold line and that can work on a very, very large shape. But if I were to go in and outline other features, I may not wish to use something this bold. So whether or not you outline is entirely up to you how much you outline also entirely up to you. Let me continue. I will begin to add my colors soon and as I've done in previous videos I will draw but I will speed up the pace so that we can see this done I'm going to put a little bump right there. This is a little bit small for such a big marker, so I may have to make that a little bit bigger. And this is going to go a little bit bigger there. And I think I'll stop working with this very big marker right now. And if I am to use a dark line, I might switch to a skinny marker. This is another Sharpie, another permanent marker but with a very fine tip. Again, you do not have to ever outline if you don't want to. In fact, if you like outlining with pencil, you could outline with pencil. You see how light these lines are? And it's very possible I won't outline everything, just a few things. Okay, I think I'm going to stop right there with the outlining. I'm going to keep this Sharpie, this fine point Sharpie handy in case I wish to pick it up again. But now I'm going to be able to add a little color. Remember, the ghosts are white, but I don't want to pass up on the opportunity to add color to them. So I'm going to go ahead, whenever I pick a color, and lay it down with very little pressure, lay it down lightly with little pressure. You can see the tummy of this ghost kind of benefits from going from a dark to a light. It kind of rounds it out. I'll go ahead, since the ghost is somewhat transparent, and take this right over the tombstone, or the grave marker, that we can kind of see through his ghostly body, his transparent body. I build my surfaces very, very slowly. Let's pretend, oh, here, see that pencil line? Let's get rid of that before we add color because if I don't get rid of some of those lines and then add my color, I can't really do much about the line. So I will do a little cleanup right now while I'm thinking about it. You can tell that I do jump around a little bit, but there is still a sense of order to what I'm doing. So dark to light over here, and I may not be done with the color and the shading on this ghost. It may be that I'll come back later. This is going to go a little darker underneath that to show that this casts a shadow. This is going to go a little darker here. And let's continue on around here, a little darker, a little darker. fading out as I go. Perhaps it's darker to the back because it's farther away. And as things are farther away, they are darker. And coming forward in space, perhaps it does get a little bit lighter. Darker there in that little nook or cranny where light is less likely to fall. 
Okay, so already you see where I kept it very light. There is evidence, although very light evidence, slight evidence of me using value, darks, mediums, and lights to shade that. Now, because I don't want to use this color up here, I'm kind of done with that one for the time being, I'll switch and I'll find a color that perhaps will complement this sort of purplish blue. And I'm going to go with this bluish green. You know, both contain the color blue. Purple contains blue and blue-green contains blue. So the two are similar in that they have a similar component, blue. And of course, I can always adjust my colors later with more mixing. I'll finish the first pass of color on the ghost, and then I will begin to speed up. And as you watch me speed up, there will be no narration, but as you, you watch the progress sped up, I should say, you'll understand that I was very exploratory with my colors. And because of the subject matter, ghosts, uh, at nighttime, in a graveyard, close to Halloween, if you begin to see some weird and wild combinations of colors, unexpected combinations, unpredictable combinations, unnatural combinations, you'll know why. Because these are ghosts in a graveyard. I turn the paper in every which way to give me that advantage of adding color. Now, let's take a look. At this point, I will go ahead and continue to work without narration. I'll speed up the process so you can see this coming together more rapidly. Remember, I'm going after value work, dark, medium, and light, and I want to give a sense of the surface being three-dimensional. Three-dimensional ghosts, three-dimensional tombstones, three-dimensional hills, and even a three-dimensional moon.
There, I'm done. A little fast on my part, and perhaps not as good as I would normally do. But you can see what I would like for you to try to accomplish. As much color as you can add, strong large shapes, good detail, high degree of craftsmanship. So let me see that you're controlling your line and placement of color well. And as much as possible, add ranges of values, light, medium, and dark throughout your work to make the surface appear to be more three-dimensional. Now, you try.